Your morning in eight minutes. A silver alert is in effect for a man from Jefferson County. This is Harold Rose. He rode, excuse me. He was last seen at his home in White Pine Saturday night. The TBI says he's five foot six with blue eyes and gray hair. He has a medical condition that may impair his ability to return home safely. If you've seen him, call 1-800-TBI-FIND. Right now, police in Jefferson County are looking for this man, 30 year old Warren Bryant of Morristown, wanted on an aggravated robbery charge. If you see him or know where he may be, please call police. Meanwhile, a traffic stop in Loudoun County leads to a major drug bust. Deputies say they found nearly two and a half pounds of pressed fentanyl pills inside of a car. Those pills have a street value of around $275,000. Deputies found even more drugs on one of the suspects. Once they got to the jail, four people are now facing charges. And the trial for Robin Howington set, set to start today. She's charged with first degree murder and child neglect, among other charges, and the death of her five year old daughter, Destiny Oliver. Destiny was shot and killed in their home in September of 2019. Investigators say Howington tried to deceive them and destroy evidence after Destiny's death. Howington is due in court later this morning. The special session will resume in Nashville this afternoon. State senators passed four bills so far, all met some of Governor Billy's goals. The House passed a few mental health bills, an order of protection bill in regards to stalking, and a bill preventing minors' autopsies from being made public unless the parents give permission. The House will be back in session at 3 this afternoon. The Senate starts back at 5. Former Tennessee Governor Don Sunquist died over the weekend. The Republican served two terms as governor from 1995 to 2003. Before that, he represented Tennessee in Congress for 12 years. Governor Lee says Sunquist was a impactful leader and a statesman who devoted his life to public service. Memorial services are planned in Memphis and Nashville before he's buried in East Tennessee. Tomorrow is primary election day in Knoxville, and so far almost 8,000 people have cast their ballots. Mayor, four city council seats, and municipal judge are all on the ballot. The top two candidates for each city council seat will move on. Mayor and judge will be based off majority vote. We have a list of all the candidates for each open spot right now inside the WVLT News app. Election day is November 7th. And the Knox County Commission holding its monthly public meeting tonight among the items on the agenda. The definition of swimming pool among various grants for schools and items from the Planning Commission. The meeting starts at 5 o'clock in the City County Building's main assembly room. Well, you have the opportunity to meet U.S. District 1 representative Diana Harshbarger. She's hosting a Conversations with Your con Congresswoman event in Sevierville this morning. It gets started at 11 o'clock at the Sevierville Civic Center on Gary Wade Boulevard. The event is free to the public. And good news if you're looking to cool off. The Augusta Quarry at Fort Dickerson Park is back open. It's been closed since last spring for utility work, but now it's open until winter. And once it closes again this winter, work will begin on adding new restrooms, changing rooms, a floating beach, new swim platforms, an expanded overlook, and a more accessible walkway. Happening today, attorneys for former White House Chief of Staff Mark Meadows heads to federal court in Georgia. It's the first hearing in the Georgia State election interference case against former President Donald Trump and 18 co-defendants. Meadows is seeking to have his state case moved to federal court. He denies any wrongdoing. And the FBI is investigating a deadly attack in Jacksonville, Florida, where police say a gunman shot and killed two black shoppers and a Dollar General employee because of their race on Saturday. The masked gunman was carrying at least one weapon bearing a swastika. The victims of the mass shooting were identified yesterday. The community gathered for a prayer vigil last night to mourn the victims and condemn the violent attack. And the National Hurricane Center says Tropical Storm E. Dahlia is strengthening quickly. A hurricane warning is now issued for parts of Cuba. The storm is expected to reach the Gulf Coast of Florida by Wednesday. It's forecast to strengthen to a Category 2 hurricane and reach the Gulf, of, Gulf Coast of Florida by Wednesday. The U.S. Commerce Secretary kicked off a four-day trip to China for meetings with government and business leaders in both Beijing and Shanghai. Secretary Gina Raimondo says her goals include strengthening commercial relations and boosting travel and tourism between the world's two largest economic powers. This is the first time a U.S. Commerce Secretary has traveled to China in seven years. President Joe Biden says he's concerned over a potential auto worker strike. The United Auto Workers announced an overwhelming 97 percent of union members voted to authorize a strike if contract negotiations fail with the big three U.S. automakers, Ford, General Motors and Stellantis. The union is asking for a 40 percent pay hike, pensions for new hires and other benefits. The deadline for an agreement 
is coming up September 14th. And Hyundai is recalling nearly 40,000 cars due to a software error that can cause the car to accelerate after releasing the brake pedal. The recall covers certain Elantras, Elantra HEVs from 2021 to 23. If your car is affected, just take it back to the dealership to have the issue fixed for free. WVLT is proud to be your official station of the Vols. Game week for the Vols starts today. Tennessee opens its season in just five days against Virginia and Nashville. We'll hear from Coach Josh Heupel later this morning for that first game week news conference of the season. We'll have more from him coming up for you later today on WVLT News. And a walk off in Williamsport. Talk about dreams. Lewis Lappy hit a walk off home run to give El Segundo, California a six to five win over Curacao in the Little League World Series championship game. Aww. I mean, it's hard to even dream that up, let alone get it done. California wins it big. Traffic taking a look at I-40 right around 275 in downtown Knoxville. You can see that volume is starting to pick up for you. Overall still light on those interstates and main roads, but that westbound side of I-40 looking a little bit busier already as you head out the door. 75 southbound, 640 westbound running on time. We're not tracking any need for an alternate route. All that overnight road work has wrapped up for you, but do want to give you a heads up if you're traveling along Alcoa Highway. The shoulders on both sides of the highway are going to be closed this week during the daytime between Woodson Drive and Cherokee Trail as they continue that expansion project. Your first alert forecast with Chief Meteorologist Heather Haley. Five minutes to seven now. We still have some heavy rain in parts of Cumberland, Southern Ventress, a little choppy throughout Morgan County and then reaching into Scott County. Again, those are moving northeast, which is why we're not quite filling in for the rest of our area yet. We're going to keep dragging that across this northwestern half of our area and then we'll drag in more as the day goes on. That leaves temperatures, though, not moving much. Upper 60s to low 70s. We do have some isolated rainfall so far on the plateau and then more on the way for your day. So a quick look at today's planner. We become more of a on and off rain and storm coverage for the afternoon. That's when we'll have about 60% of our area leaving us in the low 80s. So here's a quick look at the rainfall by the end of today and tonight. And yes, another couple of rounds tomorrow. So that's where it really adds up into some of these big spikes up to some two to three inch rainfall. Again, this is adding up today and tomorrow, but all in all, we do have some heavy rainfall moving through. Plus, at least a big impact on those temperatures. So I've got more on that coming up on the CW starting at seven. Yeah, my neighbor thanks you for uh, bringing the rain. She just because it's just because she asked you nicely.